5 south at Roxford and 405 shut down the truck lanes there. Stop traffic from the 14. Trouble through the Sepulveda Pass, 405 northbound at Mulholland. Bus fire there with carpool lane closed. Crash clearing through Corona on the 91 westbound at Auto Center Drive. Still a delay there. Stop and go from the 15. Through Anaheim, got a wreck on the 5 south at Brookhurst Street. That's off the right shoulder. Got a stall through Carson on the 110 northbound. Right at the 405 connector. It's going to be slow from Torrance Boulevard. Hey, it's Dean Sharp. How does three months of free electricity and a lifetime of energy savings sound? Well, it's yours when you go solar with Sunlux. Learn more at sunlux.com, sunlux.com. This, this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The Lakers have a very important game tonight at home against Golden State, but they're not sure if LeBron and Anthony Davis will be in the lineup. LeBron has the flu. AD has a bruised left eye. The Lakers need to win their final three games to have any chance of avoiding the play-in round. The Lakers are ninth in the Western Conference. Golden State is in the final play-in spot at 10th. The Clippers are at Phoenix tonight. The Lakers will be rooting for the Clippers. The Lakers are a game and a half behind Phoenix in the chase for the sixth spot, the final automatic qualifier for the playoffs. UConn is the first school in 17 years to win back-to-back -back NCAA men's basketball championships. Florida was the last school to do it in 2007. The Angels and Dodgers won yesterday. The Angels' new manager, Ron Washington, has his team in a first-place tie with Texas in the AL West. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. Hi, I'm Tavis Smiley. And I'm Captain Mayor Emma Sharif. You have no doubt been hearing promos and expert conversations on our various weekday shows and downloading details at KBLA1580.com about our climate justice campaign, which is now in full effect. The city of Compton is pleased to partner with KBLA Talk 1580 to celebrate Earth Day 2024 as we serve, share, and help our city shine. And KBLA Talk 1580 is just as excited to join the city of Compton as we broadcast live and bring our KBLA delegation with us to help clean and beautify our community and you are invited to join us. Come meet us on Saturday, April the 20th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton as we fan out to clean up our city. The first 50 KBLA listeners to hit our website at KBLA1580.com will receive a free KBLA tea when you join us on Saturday morning, April 20th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton. Now, no show, no shirt, but sign up at KBLA1580.com right now to help us clean up Compton as part of Earth Day 2024. We will see you on Saturday, April the 20th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in the city of Compton to do our part for Earth Day 2024. We are KBLA Talk 1580, caring about the climate, caring about the community, cleaning up Compton. like that and i know you like it when it's just like that harder girlies just love my swag from my kicks to the way i fix my hat i'm back fresh like some new jays brody got next nba 2k i'm too paid shaded with some ladies repping my city what's la baby what's la made me this way two rules stay fresh homie get paid hey never broke and never bummy i'm from where it's forever sunny and i feel like Uh, I feel like money. I feel like money. We'll talk about money uh, in just a moment. Uh, I'm Tavis Smiley. Glad to have you with us. Uh, two conversations in this final hour today. On the B side of this hour, a conversation about climate justice. 
with Mark uh, Magana, founding president and CEO of Green Latinos. We're talking about climate justice. Uh, my home station in Los Angeles uh, is engaged in a very, very robust climate justice campaign all year long. And so uh, on all of our programs, including this one heard nationally, uh, we're going to be uh, engaged, as we already have been, in a series of conversations throughout the year about black people and the climate. Yes, black folk and climate. So we'll talk about that uh, specifically with um, the founding president of, uh, of Green Latinos. Uh, we'll talk about that on the B side. But we commenced this final hour today in conversation with uh, Kimmy, Al- Kimmy Ellen, <laughs> if I can get it out, on the black tax, the so-called black tax, and some tips that she has, I hope, for us uh, getting uh, the best IRS refund this year. Ms. Ellen, how are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you today? If I complained, I'd be an ingrate. I am doing remarkably well, and uh, I'm <laughs> thrilled to, thrilled to have you on and thrilled to be in conversation uh, with you. Um, talk to me. I mean, I, this is not my first conversation about this, uh, but for those who are unfamiliar with this notion of a black tax, unpack that for starters. So what the black tax is, is there was a Stanford study that was recently performed, and what they found was that black tax Black taxpayers are more are twice as likely to get audited by the IRS than any other racial group. Mm. And so when we talk about the black tax, it's because we're taxed more because we're audited more. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not I'm not naive in asking the why question, but tell me why. Why are black people twice as likely to be audited as the good white folk? (laughs) So I think there's a couple of things. At first, I think that there's an algorithm that determines like who they audit. And I think that disproportionately, because of how we have grandparents raising children and maybe an aunt or an uncle who's raising a niece or a nephew, a lot of times when you have that dependent on your tax return that isn't a son or a daughter, Mm -hmm. you're more likely to get audited. So when you have grandparents who are raising grandchildren, they're more likely to get audited. Or you have an aunt or uncle, they're more likely to get audited. And so that's why we have that black tax because – They'll audit you, and then if you don't respond, they'll assess you. Mm. So um, what you just said um, is not a secret. Um, We have all kinds of conversations in this country, have had for years, uh, about the so-called nuclear black family. Ain't nobody in this country uh, unaware uh, of the way black folk raise their families and grandparents oftentimes end up raising grandkids. And these days, as you may know, increasingly that just ain't a black narrative. They're white folk. Uh, who are raising grandkids. I mean, the, the whole notion and nature of a so-called nuclear family has changed over the years, but but certainly that narrative is true inside of black America, and it's been that way for quite some time. And you're telling me ain't nobody told the IRS that yet? They ain't figured that out yet? Oh, they figured it out. They just won't change their algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, that, that begs the, the next obvious question. Why, why won't they change the, what's the problem? Why, why can't they change the algorithm? If they know, if they know the truth, the, the truth ought to set you free, we are told, set you free from an algorithm that just ain't right. Absolutely. But they, they, they have to manually change it and they just won't. And maybe with some pressure, either from Congress or just the public in, in, in general, they would change it. Yeah. I also read a, uh, I, I, let, me, let me pivot for a second. We'll come back to where we are. But I also read a piece not long ago, and you know more about this than I do. This is your area of expertise, not mine. But I read a piece a while ago about the ways in which the IRS has a bad algorithm, a bad track record of auditing poor people more than they do wealthy people. Yes. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, wealthy people usually use a tax strategist or a tax planner or a CPA to prepare their taxes. So the CPA is ensuring that they're following the tax law, that they're inputting the information in the tax return correctly, and that they're making sure that they get the deductions that they're eligible for. On the flip side, sometimes poor people, they're running to their neighborhood tax place. Um, and maybe they're not getting what they're in terms of service, what they should get, or maybe they're trying to do it themselves. It's surprising to me the number of people who try to prepare their taxes themselves. And if you just input the information, even though you have the correct information, if you input it incorrectly, then you're going to get a bad output. Mm. And so these things lead to you then being selected. 
Yeah, well, I think that 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 last part's pretty obvious. People do that because they try to save money. They, they don't have money to pay no tax a, a tax account to do their taxes. So they're doing it uh, one because it's cheaper. Uh, although if you get audited, Absolutely. it causes you more drama. So one, they do it because it's cheaper. And number two, um, speaking of algorithms, nowadays if you follow these prompts, it's not as difficult. I don't do mine, but it's not as difficult. I'm told as it used to be, Kimmy. That's correct. That's correct. But because their algorithms will select people who get the child tax credit Mm -hmm. and the earned income credit, the earned income credit is the most audited credit of all the credits, as well as the education credit. You know, when you're talking about that, that earned income credit and you get audited, the other thing they're counting on is they're counting on you not responding to their letter of audit. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Um, Because and you've got to respond accordingly. Yep. All right, lots to talk about here um, in this half hour. Um, our guest is uh, Kimmy Ellen uh, talking about uh, the black tax. A few more questions about that. Uh, and then some tips to help you uh, avoid, to the extent you can, being victimized, as it were, by that black tax. And some additional tips for you uh, getting the best IRS refund this year. We'll do that with Kimmy Ellen when we come forward on Tavis Smiley. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. Tavis Smiley. Ranked number 45 on the heavy 100 list of the 100 most important radio talk show hosts in America. Hey, y'all. Mona Swain here from Target's new YouTube series, My Card is Full, where we feature black founders and creators highlighting their connection to our community. As an actor and content creator, I love using my voice to inspire young black women who look like me. When it comes to feeding my shine, seeing myself reflected in black-owned and founded products at Target brings me joy. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Learn more at Target.com slash Black Beyond Measure. Cookie wants to be a professional wrestler. I'm Cookie Serratos, and I'm 11 years old. She also wants to win all the medals. That's why Cookie and her family make every day count, squeezing out her best with Go-Go Squeeze. Okay, Cookie, let's break for a Go-Go Squeeze. Go-Go Squeeze fruit-on-the-go pouches are a nutritious snack made from 100% fruit with no sugar added. Go, Cookie! Because when you nurture your kids, you squeeze out the best in them. Squeeze out the best with Go-Go Squeeze. Not a low-calorie food. Products range from 11 to 13 grams of sugar and 60 to 70 calories per serving. I spray and scrub, but the soap scum in my bathtub is still there. I spray and scrub, but the burnt sauce on my stovetop sticks around. Sprays can leave grime behind, but new Mr. Clean Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser combines the scrubbing power of an eraser with the cleaning power of Dawn to melt away tough messes on contact. Just wet, squeeze, and erase. Stop spraying, start erasing, and clean with more magic than ever with new Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking, now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I'm hitting the road with clearer skin thanks to Sky Rizzi, Rizm Kism of Rizza, a prescription only 150 milligram injection for adults who are candidates for systemic or phototherapy. Is with Sky Rizzi, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. And Sky Rizzi is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Don't use if allergic to Sky Rizzi. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Before treatment, your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fever, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or cough, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Thanks to Sky Rizzi, there's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. your doctor today about Sky Rizzi, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis, and visit skyrizzy.com or call 1-866-SKY-RIZZY to learn more. May Fresh Daily in the Mert Park, Los Angeles, California. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. Tavis Smiley and Kimmy Ellen, who is a tax expert who we asked to come on to help us uh, navigate this season, uh, this tax season. So, uh, so Kimmy, tell me more about the ways in which... Um, to the extent we can, we can avoid being victimized by this black tax. 
Well, the first thing we can do, because we know a lot of our businesses, um, our cash basis business, which have now turned to Zelle or Venmo or Cash App. Mm -hmm. So now there's a record of you actually making this income. The problem is that when you go to file your tax return, but you don't include all of that income, that triggers a warning. So keep meticulous records. Make a note of every dime that you make. On the flip side with the expenses, keep track of those expenses. Don't estimate. Actually look through your bank statements, through your credit card statements, through whatever statements you have, and pull out the items that are related to your business. So if you have a barbershop and you're buying towels or supplies, pull that out so that you can provide that and um, when you're preparing your tax return. The other thing is be conscious of how you're filing. Are you itemizing your deductions? Do you take a standard deduction? Um, know what you're doing because if you're itemizing your deductions, then that means I need to keep track of my charitable donations from day one. You should, you should keep a folder that is your folder for this fiscal year and you're inputting your expenses every time. We forget about the $30 we gave to Girl Scouts or the $20 we gave you know, to the Boy Scouts because we're not keeping track of it. But if you keep track of it all year, that adds up and that becomes a tax deduction. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the uh, anti-poverty, uh, you mentioned the earned income tax credit actually earlier, the earned income tax credit. Yes. And I, I raised that because Ronald Reagan, and you ain't often gonna hear me quote Ronald Reagan, not on this program or anyplace else for that matter. I'm not one who quotes Ronald Reagan. <laughs> but it is the one Ronald Reagan quote that I know, uh, and it stands out for the obvious reasons, um, which you'll figure out when I share it. So Ronald, Ronald Reagan once referred to the earned income tax credit as the best anti-poverty program in American history. Those are his words. Reagan, this conservative uh, icon um, to them, uh, at least, once referred to the earned income tax credit as uh, America's best anti-poverty program. You see where I'm going with this. If you got Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. if you got Ronald Reagan calling the earned income tax credit the best anti-poverty program in the nation's history, then why is it that the IRS gets triggered by this earned income tax credit and black people end up being subjected to that black tax, black tax and they end up being audited? You follow my point, do you not? Absolutely, absolutely. So you have a couple of scenarios. Number one, you have individuals who have more than three children. Maybe they have four, maybe they have five. When you get past that third child, you no longer get an additional credit. So sometimes people will ask a grandmother, hey, can you claim my other two children so that I can get extra in the earned income, earned income tax credit? Mm -hmm. And so that's when, you see, that's when you see it being misused, when people are, I don't know, giving away their children so that someone else who's close to them mm -hmm. um, can claim the tax credit. The other thing that they look at is your address. If you have five people at the same address, all claiming head of household and all claiming their earned income credit. You can only be, it can only be one head of household. <laughs> so you have a mom. All y'all can't do it. All y'all can't do it. Kids. Yeah. You can't all do it. Yeah. Right. So usually it's, it's the, whoever the, 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 the patriarch or the matriarch of the family is usually the person who has had a household. But if you have four people claiming the same address and all claiming for head of household, they're going to look at that naturally. And so, you know, when you're looking at all of this, it just, it then triggers an audit. And then when people don't respond, that's the worst thing you can do. Make sure you have that birth certificate. If you have a court order that gives you custody of a child, make sure you have that. If you give them the information, they'll leave you alone. It's the people who don't respond that get in trouble. To your point of leaving you alone, I want to circle back down to this uh, issue we were discussing earlier, Kimmy, about why the IRS has this penchant for auditing poor people more than wealthy people. Your answer in part was because they, the wealthy people, have people to do their taxes for them. They know how to play this game. We all famously recall Donald Trump bragging about the fact he didn't pay taxes because he's smart. I don't pay taxes because I'm smart. Uh, he was bold about that in the, in that presidential debate. Uh, my 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 view is not just that wealthy folk don't get audited nearly as much as poor people, poor people because they've got they've got a bunch of accountants on the payroll. That's part of it, no doubt. I I wouldn't argue that point. But it's also I think that poor people are easy prey. I mean, listen to the kind of people that you're talking about right now. They're not the Donald Trumps of the world or other wealthy people who have an army of not just accountants, but an army of attorneys, if need if need be. And the IRS don't want to fight right. that fight. It's like, okay, I'll meet, uh, I'll meet um, 
I'll meet one of my brothers or somebody I'm working with. I'll meet you in the parking lot if you want to fight. Um, but I'm not fighting Floyd May. I'm not going. I'm not fighting Floyd Mayweather. I'm not trying. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to to fight Manny Pacquiao. I mean, so you 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 pick your fights, right? And I think that the IRS just has a bad habit of picking on poor people for these audits because they're easy prey. That's just me. What say you? We're easy prey. Yeah. No, I say exact. I was going to say easy prey. They can get in. If you only have two tax credits, it's only going to take them a moment to do your, your audit. Mm -hmm. These are the two things. It, the people who have a ton of schedules and forms, it's going to take them longer to actually yes. audit you. Won't if work. all you have is an earned income tax credit or an education credit because maybe you're putting your grandchild through school, that's a quick audit. You either have the form or you don't. And, and if you have the form, then you're good. If you don't, then you're then – you're, and then I also want people to keep this in mind. If you go through an audit and everything comes out clean, they will generally leave you alone mm -hmm. the, the, in the subsequent years. Yeah. Um, I had uh, – who was on the show the other day? Uh, the comedian Roy Wood Jr. was on this program the other day. And he was telling me, uh, telling the audience about the multiple times that he's been audited over the last 15, 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, what is that about? Why is it that they don't just seem to pick on poor people, not that Roy Wood Jr. is poor, uh, but they don't just pick on poor people, but they keep coming back after you. You get, you get audited multiple times. What's that about? So it's a couple of things. When you're talking about a comedian, though, you know, they're, they're usually gig workers. That means they go, they work a job, they get a 1099, mm -hmm. then they move on to the next job. They get a 1099. So when you have those 1099s and you're putting them on your tax return, if someone doesn't issue you the 1099 and you don't put it in your tax return and then they issue you your 1099 late, guess what? You're going you're gonna to get that, that error form that says, hey, you didn't include this. So a lot of times those gig workers mm -hmm. will be audited more as well because they've got a series of 1099s and they don't have any expenses to write off against it. But when you're talking about a business, you have expenses, but you have to be meticulous. And then if you do have a business, let's set up a, a self-employment plan so that you're deferring some of those taxes and not paying 100% of the taxes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this Kimmy clip to Roy Wood Jr. when the show's over today. I'm going to say, Roy. Here's a clip. From, here's a clip from Kimmy uh, about why you keep getting audited, <laughs> and maybe you ought to do something about right. that. Uh, that said, so tell tell me the 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 the, the sunny. Is, I'm quoting Jesse Jackson now. Uh, the sunny side and the slummy side. That's that's the Jesse Jackson phrase. What is the sunny side of it being easier to do our taxes online these days, and what is the slummy side of it being easier, too easy to do our taxes these days? Right. The sunny side is that you can get it done quickly. If you just put your information in from the form directly into the system, you can usually get it done quickly. As long as you file it by um, a Wednesday cutoff, you'll actually have your money in about 10 days. Mm -hmm. So it's quick, it's easy, and if you don't have a complicated tax return, you know, it's something that's easy to do. The slummy side is when you <laughs> input information incorrectly or, or when you actually have identity fraud mm. and you try and go and file your tax return and find out that somebody has claimed your your social security number and already claimed a refund it's going to take you two years to get that that straightened out the other thing is when you are doing your own taxes online you have to make sure you have all of your tax documents you have all of your dependent information you have all of your deductions you know sometimes when people are doing that themselves they don't know everything that they're supposed to have and so they miss out on deductions, or they put something in incorrectly, and that again will trigger an audit. Which again, that's the black tax. Yep. Um, this may be a bit of an unfair question to ask you, given what you do every day. Um, but what what is your best advice to people about whether they should, in fact, attempt to do their own taxes? I would say if your taxes are simple, if you're not itemizing deductions, you don't have a business, you don't have real estate, you don't have a farm. If you have a pretty simple tax return then you can probably do it yourself. If you have any of those things, then just seek, seek help because you can, and if you can't afford it, you can go to something called the Voluntary Income Tax Assistance. They're called VITA. These are um, centers around the United States that are funded by, by IRS dollars to help people who are, are um, lesser in income actually prepare their tax returns with people who know how to pre prepare tax returns and they don't have to pay for it. Yeah, I see these um, commercials, of course, all the time on television. Um, so I know uh, that I, that identity fraud is as real as rain. Um, 
but I'm, I'm curious, again, given what you do, how, how much more prevalent it is these days. How often are you seeing um, some of your own clients, people you know, who have been subjected to identity fraud when it comes down to their taxes? You know, generally we see anywhere from five to seven people a year mm-hmm. who who we, we try and file their tax return and something's already been filed. Because remember, you may be waiting until March because you're still getting forms. They've already gone and gotten your 1W2 and filed for you at the end of January. Mm. So you don't know it right away. So we're seeing about anywhere from five to seven a year, which is a lot. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Because then after that, you have to file for identity fraud. You have to then get a personal identification number. Um, and if you get a pen, then they can't file you fraudulently the next year. But here's a huge thing. People who ignore their taxes and only file every two or three years, if you go to file three years later and someone has been filing identity fraud for the last three years, it could take you six years to get that straightened out. Mm. And what's the IRS doing, uh, given that, again, identity fraud is real, uh, people are subjected to it every day. What are they doing, if anything, on their end? Um, because it's 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 a bunch of drama for them too. It ain't just drama for the taxpayer. It's drama for them. It's it's extra work and more time and more paperwork on their on their side. Are there is there anything that they are doing to help to help people not be victimized by identity fraud when it comes time to do their taxes? The, one of the big things they're doing is giving people a personal identification number, a PIN, mm-hmm. and they send out a new one every January. So if you have identity fraud and you file for that, you will get a new PIN every year. And so they're sending that out. And so what that does is that prevents anyone from filing a tax return in your name. I would also, if I got identity fraud, I would also ask for a PIN for any of my dependents. Because if they got a hold of an old tax return, then they would have not only me, they would also have any of my children or other dependents. So I would actually just get a pen for any of those, and then that will stop any any kind of um, fraud co- from coming through. Because they're not going to mail a return in. They're going to do a quick electronic file. They're going to get that quick loan, all of that. And then they're gone about their way. They've gone to the currency exchange. They've cashed it. The money is gone. So the IRS is is giving you that pen, but you have to be meticulous and you have to file it with that number every year. The demographic uh, data profile of my audience across the country, uh, Kimmy Ellen, suggests to me that there are a lot of small business owners, a lot of small black business owners who are listening to us right now and every day. What's your best advice for small black business owners in this season? Yes. Uh, That's my sweet spot. So I love black business owners. You know, the way you create generational wealth is through business ownership. So there are a couple of things that you want to do. If you have a business that, let's say you have you have a store and you have employees, make your children your employees. Let them learn the value of working for their dollar when they're younger. And then you're keeping the money within the household because you actually have them as employees. The other thing you can do is for a business owner, Every business owner should have a SEP, a self-employment plan set up, and they can go to wherever they bank, wherever their local bank is. You just walk into there and say, hey, I'm a business owner. I need a self-employment plan. And with the self-employment plan, you can actually defer up to 25% of your profits into that plan, and then you can invest it, and you don't, need to, you don't take it out until you're, you're ready for retirement. But that, that's twofold. Number one, you're planning for retirement, and number two, you're lowering your current tax bill because you're paying less in taxes. The, the next thing that you can do is you have to keep meticulous records. Yeah. Every month, you should have that previous month's financial statement ready to go. And if you're going for bank loans, remember that they're going to want to see not only your tax return, they're going to want to see a, a, a financial statement that matches that tax return. So you can't have a tax return and you tell them, oh, I've lost $3,000 for the year, but then you give them financial statements that say you made $100,000. Well, you're, it's, it's not reconciling. And so they're going to want to look at that because they're going to see, can you service this debt? So make sure your tax return is accurate. Make sure it reflects what's on your financial statement. We thank uh, Kimmy Ellen for the good advice. Um, I could only get her for 30 minutes because you know why. It's tax season. She's busy. So <laughs> she at least squeezed out 30 minutes. All right, Kimmy, back to doing those taxes. Thank you for your time. Good to have you on the program. Thank you. We appreciate you. Day. You have a good day as well. We'll talk about climate justice when we come forward on Tavis Smiley. Seeking the truth. The truth. Speaking the truth. The truth. This, this is the Tavis, Tavis Smiley, Smiley Show. Show. 
Paid for by government.com. Did you know the United States Mint has issued a new Morgan silver dollar coin in proof condition for the first time? Not only that, they are also minted in 99.9% pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 400,000 of these legal tender silver dollars were issued. These first ever Morgan silver dollars are brand new with stunning mirror like finish. Minted by the iconic San Francisco Mint. Call now and you're guaranteed a new first ever 99.9% pure silver proof Morgan dollar. To learn more, call 1-800-973-9717. If you order now, you will receive a free coin collector bonus pack, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-973-9717 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-973-9717. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Mike Moore. Now here's the latest from the Black Information Network. A former chief financial officer for the city of Atlanta, Georgia, is facing potential prison time. The African-American former CFO Jim Beard entered a guilty plea yesterday to federal program theft yesterday. He was accused of using a city credit card to pay for thousands of dollars in personal expenses before he left office in 2018. Eight others have already been sentenced to prison for anything ranging from bribery to fraud connected to City Hall. Yesterday's total solar eclipse is over and there won't be another in the contiguous 48 states until 2044. Millions traveled to the path of totality which spanned from Texas up through a dozen states before ending in Maine. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Got a problem to Granada Hills. Overturned big rig in the truck lanes. It's the 5 south at Roxford and 405. Shut down the truck lanes there. Stop traffic from the 14. Trouble through the Sepulveda Pass, 405 northbound at Mulholland. Bus fire there with carpool lane closed. Crash clearing through Corona on the 91 westbound at Auto Center Drive. Still a delay there. Stop and go from the 15. Through Anaheim, got a wreck on the 5 south at Brookhurst Street. That's off the right shoulder. Got a stall through Carson on the 110 northbound. Right at the 405 connector. It's going to be slow from Torrance Boulevard. Hey, it's Dean Sharp. How does three months of free electricity and a lifetime of energy savings sound? Well, it's yours when you go solar with Sunlux. Learn more at sunlux.com. Sunlux.com. This, this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. I'm a bad man. The Lakers have a very important game tonight at home against Golden State, but they're not sure if LeBron and Anthony Davis will be in the lineup. LeBron has the flu. AD has a bruised left eye. The Lakers need to win their final three games to have any chance of avoiding the play-in round. The Lakers are ninth in the Western Conference. Golden State is in the final play-in spot at 10th. The Clippers are at Phoenix tonight. The Lakers will be rooting for the Clippers. The Lakers are a game and a half behind Phoenix in the chase for the sixth spot, the final automatic qualifier for the playoffs. UConn is the first school in 17 years to win back-to-back -back NCAA men's basketball championships. Florida was the last school to do it in 2007. The Angels and Dodgers won yesterday. The Angels' new manager, Ron Washington, has his team in a first-place tie with Texas in the AL West. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. This is KBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. That's music to your ears. ears. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. When you use bounce dryer sheets and your clothes look amazing, it's the sheets. 
Less static in your life? Yeah, it's the sheet. Smelling fresher than ever? It's the sheet. Oh, so soft fabric? Ooh la la. It's the sheet. Less wrinkles on your clothes? You know it's the sheet. Bounce dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness. Less static, less wrinkles. It's the sheet. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. J.P. Morgan Chase is building on the investments in California to help close the racial wealth gap and build a more equitable future. Visit jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity and get the tools to help reach your financial goals. Now. Now your ideas don't have to wait. Now they have everything they need to come to life. Dell Technologies and Intel are creating technology that loves ideas, loves expanding your business, evolving your passions. We push what technology can do. So great ideas can happen right now. Find out how to bring your ideas to life at Dell.com. Welcome to now. We used to argue about whose turn it was to clean the gutters. But then I had Leaf Filter gutter protection installed. Wait, I told you Leaf Filter had free inspections and estimates and a lifetime guarantee. Meaning we never have to argue about whose turn it is to clean the gutters again. But I visited leaffilter.com slash beacon first. No, I did. It doesn't matter who. Visit leaffilter.com slash beacon to schedule your free gutter inspection and get up to 30% off today. See representative for warranty details. Promotion is 20% off plus a 10% senior or military discount. One discount per household. I feel occasional burning and stabbing in my hands as I age. I sometimes feel numbness and tingling in my feet as I get older. It's starting to get in the way of doing what I love. At Nervive, we hear you and we can help. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Now that I know, I'm taking control. Try Nervive Nerve Relief and say yes to healthy nerves. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Let's get back to more of this rich dialogue with Tavis Smiley. I promised you a conversation with uh, a guest uh, in this half hour about uh, climate justice, and I don't know where that guest is. That guest has not shown up, uh, and so we will deal with that at a later time. Um, but um, it allows me a chance to do a couple things. One, uh, in case you've not heard, to remind you about our show tomorrow, and then there is some um, climate justice information I want to share with you about what we're doing here in Los Angeles, specifically in something that I hope that can be scaled up across the country. So we'll talk about climate justice in a few moments. Um, so let's do, do that, guest or no guest. I'll just do it by myself. Um, but uh, tomorrow, in our first hour, uh, Dr. Cornell West will be here uh, to announce his vice presidential running mate. Um, we've been talking uh, in today's program and in days past about what it means to have these third-party candidates on the ballot. Uh, RFK Jr. announced his running mate uh, some days ago. Uh, but again, Dr. Cornell West will announce uh, live on this program tomorrow in our first hour uh, who his running mate is. Uh, all kind of speculation over the last couple of days about who this person might be. Uh, but I look forward to uh, interrogating both Dr. West uh, and his running mate tomorrow on this program um, for the, 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 the full hour. Um, he will offer um, his own assessment to the question that Secretary Johnson asked me moments ago. Um, uh, I should say last hour, minutes ago, moments ago, hour ago. <laughs> anyway, I can't keep track when you do three hours every day. But Secretary Johnson asked me um, why um, there are so many, according to these polls, why there's a significant slice of African-Americans who are considering voting for Donald Trump. 
um, he couldn't quite understand that. Um, and um, Dr. West and I tomorrow uh, will talk about why he's running. Uh, and there, again, there are people who are concerned that his running um, will aid and abet Donald Trump. That's always the rub against third party candidates, that they're going to take votes away from the Democratic Party, uh, Cornel West, Bobby Kennedy, uh, Jill Stein for the Green Party. There's this uh, assumption they're going to take uh, votes away from the Democratic Party and make it easier um, for Donald Trump to get reelected. We'll put that question to Dr. West, uh, whether or not he thinks his campaign ultimately is aiding and abetting uh, the candidacy of, uh, of Mr. Trump. I can tell you this, that um, Bobby Kennedy uh, announced um, some days ago that he has, in fact, qualified for the ballot in North Carolina. Uh, and uh, that's a big deal because North Carolina, as you know, is a swing state. Uh, Dr. West will update us tomorrow on the ballot access that he has gained recently in several states as part of his 50 state strategy to offer voters uh, an independent uh, option uh, beyond what he calls, is his quote, the false choices, violence, and division of the corporate-backed duopoly. That's uh, a quote that can only come from Cornell West, the corporate-backed duopoly. Of course, he's talking about this two-party system. We were just discussing in our program today with Bhaskar Sankara of The Nation magazine whether or not uh, we deserve to have more choices in this country. Don't we deserve more choices? We have more than two choices of pretty much anything and everything else we do uh, for food and for clothing and for cars and for for. For, for smart devices, we have more than a couple of choices, but only in our electoral process and our electoral system are we limited to just two choices, essentially. And maybe the time has come to reconsider just having two choices. So Dr. West calls it the false choices, the violence and the division of the corporate back duopoly, which explains and underscores uh, why he has decided to run for president as an independent. Um, there, there, there are those who've expressed concern, um, about his outside independent candidacy and why he didn't do, or, or decided not to do what Bernie Sanders did. Bernie Sanders ran, uh, and we know that Bernie had his own style, his own, uh, uh flow, but he at least ran inside of the democratic apparatus. Uh, Bernie Sanders ran on the inside. Dr. West is running on the outside. We'll ask him tomorrow in this conversation why he's running on the outside, um, of, um, of this process. So again, uh, a conversation tomorrow with Dr. Cornell West uh, as he announces his vice presidential running mate on this program in our first hour tomorrow. Um, now, uh, on to climate justice. Uh, I mentioned we were going to have a guest in this half hour, and this is live radio. Sometimes it happens, and people just don't show up. They're not where they're supposed to be. Again, we'll deal with that <laughs> later on. Um, but what I do want to share with you is that my home station in L.A., uh, I am honored and humbled to be heard across the country, but this is something I hope that we can actually uh, scale up across the country, and that is some robust conversations about climate justice, specifically as it relates to African Americans. Um, I've said many times, and this is no surprise to any of you, that black folk and poor people, uh, we were just talking about poor people and the ways that they are put upon by the IRS. We just had a great conversation with, with Kimmy Ellen talking about why the IRS uh, uh, so easily and so readily targets poor people for audits and not wealthy people. There are a number of reasons for that. We just unpacked that moments ago. I won't repeat that. Uh, but it's not just the IRS. The, the, the climate works the same way. Uh, the persons who are being most victimized by these climate catastrophes, by these climate maladies, happen to be uh, poor people and people of color. And so if anybody, it seems to me, ought to be having a conversation about climate justice, um, it's, it's black folk. Uh, and that's just an issue that hasn't been, I think, raised high enough on the agenda in our community for conversation. And we are attempting at my home station in L.A. and certainly on this nationally syndicated program to do something about that, to raise the level of conversation, to amplify the voices of those who are not just being victimized by these maladies, but people of color who are on the front lines of this fight. There are a whole lot of people of color who, uh, who have been for, for, for decades now. Uh, raising the issue, uh, trying to raise conversations about climate justice, about climate equity, about climate resiliency. I'm thinking now of Dr. Robert Bullard. Uh, Dr. Bullard, down in Houston, uh, is known as the father, the godfather of, um, of environmental justice. Uh, and um, he deserves great credit for being at this for decades. And so there are people who've been raising these issues for years, but it hasn't become a central conversation in 
our community, in our conversations. We want to change that this year on this program. I'll tell you more about how we intend to do that when we come forward. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. Hope, agency, dignity. This is Tavis Smiley. Can you dig it? Come on! What is dedication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Joey from Vermont, a farmer trying to get through the winter. Adriana from South Carolina, a single mother living paycheck to paycheck. Liam from Ohio, an injured father struggling to provide for his family. Hi, I'm Shinola Hampton, and I support the Feeding America network of food banks because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Your floors can go from clean to dirty fast. From juice spills, whoops, to muddy paw prints, to little sticky finger marks. Good thing your Swiffer WetJet works fast too. Swiffer WetJet easily cleans everyday messes as quick as they happen. The next mess is right around the corner. So grab your Swiffer WetJet and just spray, push, all clean. At Charmin, we heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public, so we decided to sing about it. When you're rolling Charmin, don't you stop on the party. Let's just muscle roll it back, everybody. Charmin's irresistible soft and hella nice. My crib is always stopped. It's our party vibe. So Everybody wanna touch the sky. Charmin Ultra Soft is irresistibly soft and more absorbent, so you can use less. Enjoy the go with Charmin. So my home is also my office. And before I can focus, every room's got to be clean. That means tidying up and spraying my Febreze Air Mist. Ooh, that's fresh. Febreze Air Mist scents are all high quality. They fight any weird funk, and they give my air an instant boost of freshness. So not only does my home smell good, I feel good, too. After I Febreze, it's time to start my day. Breathe happy are you wet shaven? You'll get razor bumps. Nah, pops. I'm good with Gillette Skin Guard. How long you been growing that beard? Mama hates anyway. <laughs> Since 77. I shaved and got ingrown so bad. That's why I use the Gillette Skin Guard razor, face scrub, shave gel, and moisturizer. So I don't have to worry about new razor bumps or shaving irritation. Gillette Skin Guard, huh? <laughs> Your mama's going to love this one. <laughs> <laughs> the best a man can get keeps getting better with Gillette Skin Guard. Buy now at a retailer near you. <laughs> Sounds different, huh? This is Tavis Smiley. It is indeed. It's Tavis Smiley all by himself because he has no guests because the guests didn't show up in the last half hour of today's program. I was sort of <laughs> laughing to myself a moment ago about the fact that everybody wants to be a talk show host. Everybody wants to be a, a podcast host. Everybody wants to have a platform. And I ain't mad at you. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I've been at this for a long time. I ain't mad at anybody who wants to have a platform. But it's easy when you got somebody to talk to. But when your guests don't show up and you got to sit there by yourself, it's just you and Jesus in the studio. <laughs> uh, and Jesus' voice can't be heard over the microphone. It's just you. Uh, at that point, it ain't so easy to be a talk show host. So be careful what you ask for. Although I am grateful for the opportunity to sit behind this microphone every day and to talk to you uh, across this country. So I was talking about climate justice, which, which is the subject we were going to tackle in this half hour. We'll be tackling it a lot this year um, with guests who will, in fact, show up when they're supposed to be here. Uh, and, and why are we doing this? Because um, we, black people, we, poor people, end up being, uh, are in fact, the disproportionate victims of these climate catastrophes, as I said earlier, these climate maladies. And so my home station in L.A. recently did a survey, and the survey uh, was aimed specifically at African-American people, 500 um, uh, likely voters uh, in Southern California, L.A. County, uh, were asked questions about environmental issues. We, going, we want to go straight to the source. What do black people 
think about uh, the environment? What do they think about climate justice? And I was stunned, frankly surprised at the kind of response we had to this survey in Southern California uh, of, again, 500 uh, black folk about the environment. Let me just tease what we what we found in our poll. We found, first and foremost, that environmental issues are, in fact, um, social justice and civil rights issues. There's no separation, really, between those things. Environmental issues for black people are, in fact, social justice issues. Environmental issues are, in fact, civil rights issues. So there's no daylight uh, between these particular issues. But our survey found, uh, in fact, that 7 in 10, 72% of respondents believe that there is a direct connection between environmental justice, social justice, and civil rights. So an overwhelming majority of those polled believe that that connection uh, uh, does, in fact, exist. Equally as important, though, respondents overwhelmingly believe that pollution, climate change, and other forms of environmental harm impact black and Latino communities and other low-income communities more than white, Asian, wealthy, and coastal communities. Now, that's significant, which is why I wanted to talk to this brother who is the founder of Green Latinos, because it's not just us. Uh, it's impacting the Latino community as well. And that's why we booked him on this program today in this last half hour, wherever he may be at this moment. We pray that everything's okay with him. But that's why I wanted to involve them, that community, the Latino community, in this conversation as well. But here's something that's notable, and I'll close on this note, uh, for now at least. Uh, our survey also finds that this notion that black people believe that we are impacted uh, by this environmental harm or these environmental harms more than any other community that holds true among black progressives, black liberals, black moderates, and black conservatives. Now tell me any issue on which black progressives, liberals, moderates, and conservatives can agree. I can't think of very many. Frankly, I can't think of any at this moment except the one I just told you about. The one issue that we all seem to agree on in terms of its impact on our people, on our community, on poor people, on communities of color, more than any place else. We can all agree on that, whether we're progressive, liberal, moderate, or conservative. That's a statement unto itself. And that's why we need to spend more time on this program throughout the year in uh a variety of conversations with a number of experts talking about climate justice and the ways that it impacts us. We'll talk more about that when we come forward on Tavis Smiley. What's your quarrel with the world? You're listening to Tavis Smiley. If you're like me, 60 and retired, making ends meet, especially here at the supermarket and drugstore is tough. I'm so blessed to have found benefitscheckup.org. It's a free and confidential website from the National Council on Aging that connected me to $1,200 a year in programs that help pay for food, medicine, utilities, and more. Maybe it can help you. Benefitscheckup.org. My daughter was diagnosed with a rare malignant rhabdoid tumor on the spine. They sent us straight to St. Jude. My hope was gone. But when you get there, everyone's like, hey, we're not going to give up. And when you see other people not giving up on your child, that makes all the difference in the world. When I found out I didn't have to pay, I was just grateful they saved my baby's life. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 believes in community empowerment through the arts. Thea Chucha Central Cultural is on a mission to transform community in the Northeast San Fernando Valley and beyond through ancestral knowledge, the arts, literacy, and creative engagement. The Northeast San Fernando Valley has a population of about 500,000, the size of the city of Oakland, yet it has no bookstores, art galleries, or full-fledged cultural spaces until Tia Chuchas opened its doors in 2001. Founded by renowned poet and activist Luis Rodriguez, Tia Chuchas Cultural Center provides a year-round free or low-cost arts and literacy bilingual intergenerational programming in mural painting, music, dance, writing, visual arts, healing art sessions, and healing talking circles. Activities also include Mexica, Aztec dance, indigenous cosmology, philosophy, and two weekly open mic nights, one in Spanish, the other in English. In addition, they 
may host author readings, film screenings, and art exhibits. To express yourself, heal yourself, attend an event, or volunteer, please visit www.tiachucha.org. That's T-I-A-C-H-U-C-H-A dot org. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Tips to help improve your credit score in 2024. Establishing credit is an important key to achieving financial health, but building a credit history from scratch can feel challenging since you need credit to build credit. First, What does it mean to build credit? All consumers have a score between 300 and 850. You want your score to be as high as possible as lenders look at your credit score to make loan and credit decisions. A good credit score shows you have a track record of borrowing money responsibly. Remember, it's never too late to build or rebuild your credit. This segment is sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company. and expand your inventory of ideas. ideas. More of Tavis Smiley coming your way right now. Just want to close the circle on this uh, conversation I was having with you, with myself, (laughs) about climate justice. Uh, And so um, uh, here's my my final thought about this, which I think you'll find fascinating and interesting. Um, So I was saying to you that our survey uh, finds that black voters believe that low-income communities and communities of color Uh, are and will, in fact, be most affected by climate change in the years to come. And so uh, I think the timing is now. Uh, uh, The timing could not be more propitious for us in the black community to start having conversations in earnest about climate justice. Again, I said earlier, there are many of uh, many black people across this country who've been doing this uh, righteous work, this heavy lifting for years. But it's not, let's face it, it's not a sexy subject. It's not an easy subject. Uh, and frankly, it's depressing when you consider the ways in which uh, the damage that we have done to our planet uh, uh, is going to redound in the years to come. But at the moment, it's not too late. Uh, there is stuff that we can do uh, to turn the tide, pardon the pun, uh, against um, uh, the the uh, the damage already done, um, man-made, human-made damage already done uh, when it comes to our climate. I was just thinking moments ago about how everybody got so excited yesterday about the solar eclipse. I didn't get a chance to see it myself, but the photos that I've seen today are stunning, just phenomenal seeing those photos. This, this won't happen for, what, another 20, 40 years before this happens again, I read somewhere. Uh, but the photos of that of that uh, solar eclipse were, were stunning yesterday. Many of my family, many of my friends saw it. Everybody got turned on by this yesterday. They had a couple of thoughts about that, right? Quick, number one, um, it is amazing at this point in, um, in American history, at this point in our democracy, um, the things that can actually bring us together. It takes a solar eclipse to get everybody on the same page. Everybody celebrating that. Everybody was inspired by it. I wish it were. I wish it didn't take a solar eclipse to get us to come together uh, and to recognize um, uh, the humanity that we all share. I digress on that point. But the solar eclipse was, was a beautiful thing yesterday. Um, so we can celebrate that up in the heavens. In the heavens, we can celebrate that. But what about down here on Earth? Uh, and all that we are navigating through in real time. What say we about that? More importantly, what are we going to do about that? I close on this note. Um, Many of you, um, and I mean millions of people (laughs) over the years, it seems, have been asking me to bring back the State of the Black Union, and I've resisted that for a lot of reasons. Uh, It was a beautiful thing when we did it for those dozen years. Everybody tuned in every February to C-SPAN to watch the State of the Black Union. Uh, It's some of the best work I've ever done in my career. So I'm not bringing back the State of the Black Union, as it were, But I will tease you and tell you more in the weeks to come about a national conversation that we are going to have on national television that I will be moderating, like State of the Black Union, with a stage full of panelists talking about, you guessed it, black folk and climate change. We're going to flip the script. We're going to change this conversation. We're going to elevate the dialogue and the discourse about this issue of climate justice and, uh, and, and how it relates to our community in the months and years to come. So there's a tease. It's going to happen in June. That's all I can tell you right now. 
But I'm going back on national television. I'm going to moderate another one of these conversations. And this time, we're bringing together experts to talk about the impact of climate justice on our community. That's all I can tell you for now because that's all the time I have for now. Uh, just like that, three hours gone. Back here tomorrow, Lord willing to do it all over again. Until then, thanks for tuning in to Tavis Smiley. And as always, keep the faith. KBLA 15.